Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna be unboxing and reviewing the Tar Amps 3000 Watt Smart 3. And uh, it's said to put out 3000 watts at one and two ohms. So it's actually got this really like smart kind of like restrictor almost, so it doesn't let the amp push unsafe levels of power, you know? So it's pretty cool. Um, there's a lot of other videos out there on YouTube that you can go ahead and look at if you want to learn more about that. This is mainly going to be um, just an unboxing and a review. So we're going to go ahead and start unboxing it. We have it right here. And uh, yeah, so this is going to be running my single American Base 12. And uh, the 12 is rated for 1500 watts, 3000 max. So this should be a pretty nice combo. Whenever we're doing this, we're also going to be upgrading to zero gauge wire. So that should also help. And uh, this amp is said to have zero gauge inputs. So, or maybe one gauge or something like that. So I'm gonna have to trim it. And we're gonna be running this off of my Lincoln Town Car over there. Can't really see it, but we recently did the big three upgrade and installed a 250 amp alternator. So we should be decent we should be decent so let's go ahead and open it up oh still sealed up damn the packaging is kind of like so so it's kind of just in here really but other than that here it is so we got a couple of little like info stuff right there go ahead and set this down to be able to really open it up for you guys So it does have a power on if it's clipping and protection mode, kind of like dummy light. So that's cool. It does have dual smart cooler fans on it. We've got our zeros inputs, the remote. Go ahead and take it completely out. On this side, we have our gain high pass and low pass crossover. We got our bass boost by frequency and regular boost by decibels. Um, monitor, that's gonna be where we plug in our dummy lights. We have an in and an out. So this pretty much only requires one RCA because it's delivering a mono signal anyways. And then we got our believed to be eight gauge speaker wire terminals. So off the bat, it does look pretty good. Uh, it's real small. Only thing I would say is the bottom. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but like the bottom sounds kind of loose, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So this is pretty much what it looks like. Not bad, not bad. And like I said, it's real small. And I'll probably go ahead and take this film off as well, because I believe this here lights up, like whenever you're putting power to it. dealing with so there you have that um, and like I said we are going to be running zero gauge so I'm gonna go ahead and take you out to the car so we can see what we're juking with in the trunk setup so here we have our trunk setup American base XFL 1222 so it is a 2 ohm and like I said in a little bit earlier it is a 1500 watt, but it's got 3000 max on a 3K amp, and I do not plan on running it full tilt. So we should be good. I'm running zero gauge wire for my battery. I am running these two compressors also, but I'd like to think it doesn't make that big of a deal as long as I'm not pounding whenever they're running. But uh, yeah, currently we had it on a SCAR RP1200 
running it at one ohm as well but this amp has gone into protection mode and no longer wants to come out so who knows if it's any good according to scar i have to undo the wiring and see if it'll come out of protection mode within like a day or so but um, we are going to be switching it up and i want to place the amp actually mount it over here on the side in this open area like on the back side of this spare tire and i think that'll help as well to reduce like the vibrations the amp sees and all that um, I am going to leave the, the sub how it is, still going to wire it down to 1 ohm because uh, that amp is more efficient at 1 ohm even though it still produces the same power at 2. It's just easier for the amp to push the power at 1 ohm instead of 2. So yeah, and uh, we are going to have to be going through here, replacing all of this, changing it over to zero gauge. Um, I'm going to put a bigger um, fuse holder in line with the zero gauge. I'm going to be running a 300 amp fuse on it, so it should be pretty good. And I'm going to be upgrading the ground as well over there. So it should be nice, should be nice. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get juking on that stuff. Once I have the amp in the car and powered on, I'll go ahead and bring you guys back to see what it looks like all mounted up and finished up. And from there, we are going to go ahead and uh, the sub itself should be broken in by now. I was pounding on it for a good minute. So we should be good to go to give it a nice little session and show you guys what it sounds like. So let's do it. Whew. Yeah, that was some work. So we got it all knocked out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and first show you guys I installed the new fuse holder. And like I said, this fuse holder here, as you can see, it is indeed zero gauge, 300 amp. For some reason, don't want to focus. There we are. And it's got a... A voltage readout so right now we do have the car off we are at 12.7 volts um, I'm running 850 cold cranking amp battery from AutoZone Duralast Gold baby 150 um, amp storage or whatever that is reserve capacity so just to recap like I said we are running a 250 amp high output alternator zero gauge ground and power coming in 300 amp fuse on the incoming power both the power and ground are zero gauge for the battery. We got zero gauge running to the back. And this is what you guys have been waiting for. So here we have our Tar Amps 3K Smart 3K, I guess. And we are also running the zero gauge to that. We are running eight gauge wire, which is splicing into the dual eight gauge on the sub. We have our... Um, our little protector piece here that has whenever the sub or the amp is clipping whenever it's turned on and the protection mode I have every single setting on the amp turned down so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the car and see what it does uh, let me pull this scar John out of here too all right guys so with the car on it does run about 14.2 volts um, sometimes goes a little higher than that kind of just depends I guess but yeah, so it's going to be running about 14.2 volts. I'll show you guys the amp. Everything is powered on. As you can see here. Maybe. Okay, so the one on the left is power. The middle is clip. And to the right is the protection mode. So, like I said, I have everything turned down. I did turn the gain up about halfway because it wasn't giving the sub absolutely any juice. Um, so, just in bumping it, for maybe like half a song we have already created carnage guys um i have broken this clamp oh shit. oh my god the music started by itself all right yeah and so we also broke this mount too so um yeah the tar amp is not bad so what we're gonna go ahead and do is i'm gonna be playing for you guys i love big speakers by Bass boy and who knows who. So here we have it.
Alright guys, so what I'm going to do for you guys now, um, I'm going to play the music again and I'm going to adjust the gain on the amp in real time so that you guys can see how the clip sensor works. So pretty much, I mean, when you're throwing too much at it, it's going to clip. So here it is. Okay guys, so yeah, there you have it, she kind of pounds. So next up, we're gonna go ahead and close the trunk. I'm gonna hop up in the car and we'll see what it sounds like in the car. Cause I know back here my enclosure is going bad cause it's just getting pounded to fuck. So I mean, you know what it is, but yeah. We're gonna go ahead, I have the amp set back down, half gain, everything else turned down. Everything is good to go, boyos. Alright, we are now in the car, we got the windows down.
right, guys. So there you have it. Tar Amp Smart 3K. Does the job it's supposed to do very well. I do have it turned down, like I said. Uh, I was running that SCAR RP1200. Pretty much max capacity. It pushed out like 1400 watts RMS at peak, you know. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's why I went into protection mode and it kind of just stayed there. That amp doesn't have external fuses. Um, it was bumping while I had it in there, but it's just not lasting, you know. So now I got 3K, and like I said, pushing with half gain, you know, I'd say at least 2,000 watts to it, maybe. Um, but this should be a more reliable setup because that was essentially the goal. I wanted to run zero gauge wire to the amplifier and be able to have the amplifier not running at max capacity. That way, like going on trips and stuff, it's not going to turn off on me. This one does have dual fans on it and everything. So it's an upgrade all around. Um, and as you've seen, when the bass was hitting, the lowest voltage I had was maybe like 12.6. So I think that's pretty decent. I mean, that's at idle too. So whenever the car is actually driving or whatever, it should do better. But uh, yeah, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Go ahead and drop a comment if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about the Smart 3K. And uh, we also have a lot more stuff coming. I'm going to give you guys a little sneak peek. So we have our truck here, as you guys know. Um, I am waiting on the fuel cell, which I believe you guys do know. But we also have these Chrome Johns here. So these are Chrome shocks from Speedway Motors. Or, yeah, Speedway Motors, there they are. So I got a set for the back of the truck, for the front of the truck, and for the front of the Lincoln over there. So that should be pretty cool coming up in the future. The other thing is we're going to be getting rid of this gas tank on the truck. Going to be putting in the fuel cell and mounting the air tank in front of it. Just to give you guys kind of an idea. It's going to be something like this. So as you can see there, shock is going to be mounted there to there. Um, that's not exact placement just because I haven't like cycled the suspension or anything for it yet. But that's just a little sneak peek for you guys. Let me know what you guys want to see in the next video. I know I've been slacking on the videos, but I mean, life has been throwing curveballs. Got all kinds of coronavirus stuff. We got Minneapolis stuff. There's all kinds of stuff. I mean, it doesn't really affect me, you know, but it is what it is. Puts a damper on everything. So go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think for real. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.